and thank you for staying with Citizen Weekend. With me in studio, West Pocot Governor Simon Kachapin on the governor's seat. Thank you for your time this evening. Thanks a lot. Let's start with the main concern in the county, West Pocot, which is security, cattle rustling, the proliferation of small arms. What are you doing about this situation? Uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity uh, to be in the studio and to say something about West Pocot County. Um, I think the issue of insecurity has been taken out of uh, proportions. Uh, it is not as it is alleged that West Pocot is all that bad. This is an isolated uh, cases at the, uh, in the boundaries, say Turkana, and in the Uganda side, it was solved a long time ago. So that uh, negative perception has been there. But you, you go ground, just as some isolated, um, isolated uh, issues of cattle rustling. But I can say 98% of the county mm -hmm. is safe. There's no issue of insecurity. Mm -hmm. and so the situation, you would say, is, is under control yeah, as we speak? The, 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 the situation is under control. Mm -hmm. yeah. But still, the prevalence of Kenya Police Reservists, and very recently you had called on the national government to pay the Kenya Police Reservists um, because their role is seen to be very important in maintaining peace in the area. Obviously, that means that there is a security issue, there's a, there are security concerns in the county. Yeah, we, we called on the, the, the national government to pay the Kenya uh, Police Reservists because uh, the number of regular police, especially in our borders, they are, they are, they are not adequate. And that means that uh, the, the KPR, or the Kenya Police Service, are playing a very major role in, a, in, a, in helping, in assisting the regular police. And uh, they should not be left like that. They should be assisted because they have been issued with the guns. Uh -huh. And as human beings, they must be assisted. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. And the county has been identified as one of the marginalized counties. West Pocot has been seen for a long time to be lagging behind in development. Um, you will receive 223 million shillings annually under the Equalization yeah. Fund. What are your priorities in as far as bridging the gap um, uh, of development in the county and other parts of the country, just making sure that West Pocot is at par with other areas in the county, your priorities? Yeah, it is true. West Pokot has been classified as one of the marginalized counties in the country. And uh, this is unfortunate because uh, the marginalization came as a result of the government not having prioritized its development in those counties. West Pokot is a very rich country. We have a diverse resources, both human and uh, uh, natural resources. Uh -huh. And if all these resources had been exploited, West Pocot would not be a marginalized county. Right. Because we are, we have areas that are rich in agriculture. We have resources like minerals. We have uh, uh, animals that uh, can, can turn the county if it, if it is commercialized. We have, uh, we have enough water. We have, we, have, we, have, we have perennial rivers which can be used for irrigation in areas which are which are uh, semi-arid. Uh -huh. So West what are Pocot. you doing? What are you doing to bridge this gap? Seeing that the, of course, the, the the resources are currently there. The support probably has been lacking over the years from the national government, as you've said. What are you doing to address some of these challenges? I can say uh, the issue of devolution is a blessing to us, because as resources are devolved to the counties, me as a governor and other leaders in the county. We have priori prioritized the main areas that has made us to lag behind. For example, our roads are impassable. And we have allocated enough resources, more than half a billion, to see to that all, all the areas that were closed are accessed. Because as you, as you make the roads to be uh, passable, mm -hmm you are stimulating other areas of, of the economy, like agriculture. And just hold, uh, hold that thought. We'll be moving on to the other priority yes. issues. The road issue, yes. deplorable state of the yeah. roads in West Pocot County, and yet the national government has retained 
the transfer of functions regarding road management and the national government now is in charge of these uh, functions. What, what next? What next for West Pokot? Do you feel that this perhaps could pose as a stumbling block um, in as far as addressing the state of roads in the county is concerned, which a lot of our viewers are actually raising uh, issue with? It is true that uh, uh, the governors have been fighting to see to that. The issues of roads, just as the constitution is very clear, that all county roads should be managed by the county governments. So it's very unfortunate when we see that uh, the, same, uh, the same is being maintained. These, these, uh, these authorities like Kera and Kura, they have been there for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And you can see the roads are still in those bad, uh, bad shape. They are still in those deplorable conditions. So us in the county governments are in a position to be able to prioritize the areas. We have some locations, for example, which have never seen roads since independence. And I don't want to say, I don't want uh, 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 to see a situation whereby the same is perpetuated. Over 50 years, the same roads are in the same state. Why should the national government hold on on these roads? Mm -hmm. When in 50 years, you are unable to develop those areas. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, the opportunity is with us because uh, they were of the shoe knows where it pinches. And also another service um, and, um, that, that the national government um, has retained is, medi is medicine, the, the medical services issue um, in West Pocot. Um, a, a key concern, and this question coming in, key concern is access to medical services. And in our fact file earlier, uh, we had mentioned, um, I have this in my statistics, that doctor to patient ra ratio is one doctor for every 84,528 people. The county has 30 one health facilities with one district hospital, 27 dispensaries, and three health centers. The national government retaining this function, um, health services. How do we go forward in as far as bringing health services closer to the people? And are okay. you in communication with the national government to ensure that some of these issues are addressed? Again, Lillian, um, as you say, the statistics are also sad in the health sector. As you have read, we have only one district hospital, which when, we came to, when I came as a governor, the basic facilities like x-rays were not working. The mortuary is not working even up to now. The basic drugs are non-existent. Mm -hmm. And when you go to records, for example, it shows that we have over 20 doctors. Right. And when you, on, you go on the ground, we have only four. Mm -hmm. And we have some areas that we don't have even dispensaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is sad when, you, when, when we hear that the government, the same, 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 the same trend is, is going to be maintained when our people were very much uh, passionate and excited about uh, uh, devolving these functions so that as a governor who has been, who has been uh, elected, I have a mandate with the people so that in 2017 I can say I did, I changed the people. We came as governors with uh, so much passion to change the status quo. Mm -hmm. But if they get again, the same uh, is reversed, and then it's unfortunate because then, then it means the same, same areas will be continued to be marginalized. Mm -hmm. Education, another key concern, a student to teacher ratio, one teacher for every 50 students. Is this correct? It is not correct mm -hmm. because me, I've been a teacher for a long time. I've been, been a principal. The situation also is, is bad, and that's why these areas are marginalized. And the government can attest that because it has proved that these areas are marginalized. Because especially West Pakot was a closed district for a long time. And, 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 and Governor, w when you say it is not correct that there's one teacher for every 50 students, are you saying that they are teachers? No, that the, that the, service, that the, the, the teachers are enough in the county? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I'm saying they are not enough. Okay. Teachers are not enough, especially in our county, mm -hmm. because of the perception that those areas are, 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 are of hardship and so forth. You find very few teachers are actually uh, in our county. Are there plans underway to ensure that more teachers are deployed to West Pocot? Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that we have more than once actually agitated with the national government, because as it, as it is now, 
is a function of the national government mm -hmm. to see to it that we have enough teachers through the teacher service commission mm -hmm. and we are still uh, calling upon the national government to see to it that human resource the teachers is something that um, must be put uh, put into priority right than even anything anything else because if you have enough teachers then you mean that the teachers can be creative and be able to uh, give more mm. somebody here is asking what are you doing towards girls and boys who fear going home during school holidays due to forced early mar marriages and cattle rustling um, the school issue in terms of, of just children opting and preferring to be in school um, coming up very prominently here what are your plans concerning the FGM and early marriages leading to school dropouts secondly what are you doing to families in your county feeding on wild fruits in this era and time. Wow, perhaps that's a bit harsh, but <laughs> <laughs> that's coming from our viewers. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. Um, as I said earlier, there are some issues that have already been addressed. I think the wild fruits Isu is a poverty issue, really, and I think that's what this yeah, uh, viewer is addressing. But it's not as wild as it is stated. <laughs> it is not true that people are feeding on uh, wild fruits and so forth. Uh, but I issues of FGM and so forth were mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But in recent times, all these issues have been addressed through non-governmental organizations such as World Vision and so forth, right. and other and other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, civil uh, education has been taken. I think issues of uh, early marriages and so forth as is being addressed. And uh, can I assure you that in recent times, the last 10 years, uh, West Pokot County has taken education seriously. Mm -hmm. And you can see by even uh, you can t you see the statistics right. uh, of transition uh, mm -hmm. to, to second school and the universities at the moment. And we are running out of time, yes. but I, b I believe this is a question that I need to forward to you. Yes. I've been wondering why gypsum material from West Pokot County is, sh is, is shipped in Kitale town and later on transported, transported to Uganda. Don't we have the capacity to process, it, to process it in Kenya or is it another mining scandal? This is a question that's gypsum. coming. Yes. Uh, it is not true. What used to be transported to Uganda was uh, limestone. Mm -hmm. And then we had also chromium. West Pokot is actually is a rich country as far as metal is concerned. Right. But you can see, for example, limestone is a, is a, is a, is a good story that uh, soon, this month, we are going to establish, uh, the county is going to have uh, a, 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 an industry of processing limestone. Right. Yeah. Um, and last question, what criteria did you use to select your executive and your board, given that uh, execu your executives are people from your party? What is your plan for other people from other parties? This is regarding uh, your county assembly and the county executive committee, I, I believe. No, it's not true that uh, we selected people from our own party. I think we, 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 we selected people based on their professional and their experience mm -hmm. on the area. If you are, you are, you are, for example, health. The person uh, money health is a professional person in that in that field. So we didn't actually based on the on, on the issue of parties. Mm -hmm. and that's not true. Right. And uh, someone here saying, Governor, please build schools, build schools, build schools. We cannot have our children learning under trees. I believe just as we wind up in a summary, what should the people of West Pokot County see from you in as terms of in terms of a difference in the county? What are they expecting to see? Well, as I said earlier. Me and other leaders, we have the passion. And, you, and uh, let me assure uh, the residents of West Pokot that during this period, and even devolution is facilitated very well. The national government facilitated devolution, and resources are, give, uh, are, 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 are devolved to the counties. We have the will, uh -huh. and we have the passion to see to it that uh, our counties are changed. And I want to assure uh, the residents of West Pokot that I and other leaders, we are united to see to that uh, uh, the, the, the trend, the bad trends that were there are reversed and we shall see a change in West Pokot uh, in soon. the next four years. Thank you. Yeah. The, in the next four years, which is very four soon. Years, yeah. Thank you very much. Simon Kachapin, Governor West Pokot County, with me on the governor's seat tonight. Thank you.
for your comments and indeed your questions. And let's move on now. In the Shifta War of 1963 to 1967 was a secessionist conflict in which ethnic Somalis in the now northeastern Kenya attempted to join the region with the rest of Somalia. The Kenyan government reacted angrily with its security officers allegedly forcing civilians into concentration camps. But did you know that today there are people in the heart of Isiolo County who many years after the Shifta War are confused about whether they are Kenyans or Somalis. Michael Njenga visited Komboni village and here now is his report, The Stateless Community. <laughs> 